2023 meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission. This meeting and hearings of the Conservation Commission will be held in person at the main meeting room in Town Hall. Members of the public are welcome to attend this in-person meeting. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and our participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting slash hearings will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should it's preferable to make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance. Okay, so uh, following the meeting to order, uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone here, either online or in the audience, uh, who would like to make a comment about something not on the agenda? Uh, the record, uh, the record should, show should show that the answer, the answer is, is no. No one is here for that. Uh, approval of minutes for June 8th. Are we in a position to approve those minutes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have approval of minutes for June 8th. Uh, I was away. So if they came in, I did not get to edit them separately. Right. I'm not sure they came. Okay. Next time. Okay, next we have a request number four, request for certificate of compliance uh, for completion and surety release. Uh, it is 7 Willow Road, uh, it's the self-storage facility, uh, it's called Mar Mar Maranoff's Holdings LLC, it's DEP Fire Number 604. The certificate of compliance has already been issued for 7 Wheeler Road. However, there was some surety being withheld for the establishment of the plans. So, uh, either Eileen or John, would you like to comment first? Um, so, yes, yeah, so the certificate of compliance was issued uh, it was from the beginning of the year. Um, it was issued in, uh, actually in the last year in December. Um, the superseding order of the product was issued several months before that. Um, but in part because of the drought last year, the plant did not do too well last year, and then so they plant in the fall. Um, so we did a site visit today and uh, Wednesday, and um, I think a lot of the plantings that they put in uh, didn't really survive, but the area has gotten fairly uh, well established with vegetation, all tier vegetation spreading from the you know, from the adjacent areas. So there's it's um, Say it's recovering well. This is mostly floodplain restoration you're talking about. It's not a lot of replication. It's just basically getting the floodplain and budgeted. So I think it's good enough. Do you have a question? Should we put the volume higher? Because I have a very hard time hearing. Speak louder. Or is it like being used? Well, it's just the page. Okay, we're not talking about your project yet. Okay. Um, so anyway, so I think the vegetation is well established. And uh, watch out. Oh. Okay. So anyway, so I, I think it's um, well established enough to release the, the money roll. Right. So the question I have, there was a super seed order. But there was a bylaw decision as well. Correct. <laughs> DEP already did their own certificate of compliance. Did, did we release our certificate as well on the bylaw? Right. Several months after we did. The DEP was premature um, in issuing it. The project wasn't very completed, but um, so the restoration was concluded. But we did issue it in the fall. So the only thing we do have is the lease of lot for sure. Correct. Okay. I would. Uh, I was out there with. Uh, I was out there, and what we saw was a lot of the 
plant things that would be a sticks that didn't survive. But there's a whole bunch of grasses over there now. And I guess you'd consider it stabilized nevertheless. And since it was floodplain uh, replication as opposed to wetlands replication, the specific plants surviving in this one is important. I think that's what you mentioned to us. Right. Because it's native vegetation. Right? If, it was, if it was just flowing in the, the base of the nominator, it would be something we can That's not the case. Okay, so I want to explain the difference why. I mean, basically, a lot of the plants just didn't make it. You know? But it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's stabilized. And it's probably going to get thicker as time goes on. It seems to be quite a wet area since it's supposed to be a floodplain. It seems to be a floodplain. So does anyone have any comment would like to talk at all about it? Just for the other pictures, um, I thought it was well taken as far as the growth is there. Most of it's like ankle high. There's some cattails already this high. So it's starting to flourish with native growth. All right. So if there's nothing further, how much is the uh, bond left? So um, so, so I will note that there is someone from the applicant on my line, I don't know if he's saying it, but Eric, Eric, did you? Okay, is there, if there's anyone here for uh, 7 Mule Road, if you'd like to say anything, you're welcome to do so. I'm Pete, can you all hear me? Uh, yes. I just talked loudly. Okay, sorry, yeah, I, I don't have anything to add. I am online and following along, but uh, nothing to contribute, no. Okay, what was your name, please? Eric, E-R-I-C. Last name is Jacqueline, J-A-C-K-E-L-E-N. Okay, and what's your, your role with the project? Uh, asset management uh, for the ownership. All right, perfect. Thank you for letting us know you're here. You're welcome. Okay, so the original bond amount was $20,000, um, and then when the commission... Um, was contemplating issuing a, issuing a certificate of compliance, you required an additional $10,000 bond. So we have a total of $30,000 if that's the case. Yeah, I'm seeing the same thing, 10,000 to yeah. shoot that there, yeah. yeah. All right, therefore, could I have a motion to release the full amount of the bond believed to be $30,000 to uh, for the project at 7 Wheeler Road Self Storage Facility to Baranoff Holdings, LLC, DEP file number 122-604. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? One, two, three, five, zero, zero. That's unanimous. The full bond is released. Okay, sir, you're all set on this one. Thank you very much, guys. All right, thanks. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Uh, item number five, it is a request for an extension to an order of conditions it is for location 9-11 Ray Ave uh, for Ray Estates Trust uh, by Robert W. Murray, DEP file number 122-594. Is there anyone in the audience for that? Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? So, as soon as I said it, you were there. No. Magic. <laughs> Phyllis Etzel, and I'm here representing Mr. Murray, Robert Murray. Um, to request an extension of the order of conditions for 911 Ray Avenue. Um, we do intend to begin work this year. So it would be good to get an extension. Yes, it would be. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, is John or Eileen, is there any reason, like, there's, there's no work, so there's no violation? So right. is there any reason why? We should not extend it. Nope. So just for the benefit of those of you who weren't here, this is for a parking lot on Ray Ave um, to associated with the uh, Cafe Escadrille. So it's parking for the Escadrille um, on the adjacent property on Ray Avenue. The order of conditions was, it was approved in 2017. It was extended to 2020. Um, and then to 2023. So this this will be right. the third extension. Okay. All right. Uh, any comment from the commission? Hearing none, could I have a motion 
to extend the order of conditions for 911 Ray Ave for the Ray Estates Trust Rob by Robert W. Murray, DEP file number 122-594 for three years. Right. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Five zero zero. It's extended. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Excellent. Yeah. Do you have anything else on the agenda? No, we don't. I'm interested in what's coming up later. Yeah, I was just going to ask you. Uh, that it might. It might be fairly quickly if you want to stay on for it. Um, okay. It's up to you, but I, I don't. I, I don't think we're going to be very long. In fact. Um, Bob had asked me about it, and I really know very little. Which ta I'm talking about the changes to the Burlington what? what yes, I, I I figured that would be the case. Yes, sure. And, uh, I didn't know anything about it, so I am interested. I'll stay. Okay. So, sounds great. You're welcome to. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, okay, we have a request for determination. Notice is hereby given. Let the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission hold a public meeting. Uh, will act upon a request for determination of applicability filed by Key Juan Lee for a proposed shed installation within bordering land subject to flooding, riverfront area, and the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetland at 14 Sandy Brook Road in Burlington. The Commission will thereafter issue a determination of applicability. The application is being heard under both the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and Burlington Bylaw Article 14, and a copy of the application is available by writing to conservation at burlington.org. So the way this works is you should uh, introduce yourselves uh, and we, we, where you both live, if you live at the same location, whatever, uh, and then you can tell us what you would like, what, what's anything you would like to say. Okay. So this is Kiwan Lee, who's the applicant to file the application, which it was a little bit late. I, I, I did realize, and my name is Grace. I'm, I'm his daughter, actually. I'm here as a translator because his English is limited. Sure. We have spoken enough together, so I understand what he is trying to say. So uh, he's been living there for over 20 years. We have not done a lot of uh, improvement due to the fact that it was in the flood zone. And uh, recently, he got the uh, he got an electric car, which he had to empty out his storage, which he was using in his garages. So he he did not have any place to restore anything. So then he made a decision to build a shed because of the fact that he doesn't have anywhere to store his equipment. So it was kind of it was very inevitable that he had to build a shed, and uh, he um, did the build the shed. Uh, he was aware of the procedure he had to go through before, but he he wasn't. So, but he later we filed we filed the application, and I think he went through. So we built a shed, and I think it's. Uh, I'm looking at the dis. I mean, with some of the conditions that you guys are proposing that the shed can be kept, except the fields had to be moved. We haven't discussed that. Okay, we haven't discussed that. Okay, so this is the condition why we, we, he really needs the shed, and uh, it's something that. Um, it's very necessary for him to have a decent life at that location. <laughs> Not only that, uh, it, we did. Okay, that's about it for now. Okay, very good summary. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, John and I are Eileen. Uh, we have a shed that's already been placed in a floodplain. So, could you tell us your your uh, assessment of it? Sure. Um, I can't remember exactly how it came to our attention. I guess it was maybe through the building department. Actually, yes, yes, and, and a drive by. Yeah. So, um, so it was placed there. Um, we have talked to the applicant in the past because he had brought in some loam. We talked to him about filling at that time, but um, the commission at that point decided it was only a couple of inches of loam, and it wasn't um, wasn't anything you were going to make him file for. Um, so he's aware of the floodplain issues. Um, the shed is on cinder blocks, um, and there's dirt piled up around the cinder blocks so that basically um, no water could flow under the shed because of the dirt. It doesn't appear that the cinder blocks were piled on top of the dirt they were brought in. It looks like the cinder blocks are on the original level and the dirt's piled up around them. 
Um, the distance to the wetland is probably less than five feet, um, but the, the shed is on existing lawn. Um, and there's very limited places on this property where you could put a shed where it wouldn't be that close to the, to the wetland. There's no place you could put it on the lot where it wouldn't be in the floodplain. And it's on the far side of the lot from the brook. So it's about 170 feet from Long Meadow Brook. If, if you put it on the other side, it would be closer to the brook. So, so, so the commission did a site visit uh, yesterday and, and saw that there was, there was dirt piled around underneath the shed. And I think um, a possible solution because of the floodplain issue is to remove that fill so that water can then flow under the shed as needed. Right. All right. So, uh, Indra, any comment? Oh, I think that the donor says that it needs to be, you know, the water needs to be flow. So, right. if it's not clean, the water cannot flow, and it is in the flood zone. All right, Bill. Yeah, I agree with Indra. That's as long as it's up on blocks, uh, it's not really interfering with the uh, the wetland. I, I, I mean, the uh, the flood zone. Yeah. So, I think it's not an issue. All righty, uh, Rob. Any comment further? Um, I, I, do, I do think the, the shed is in probably in the best location that it could be on the lot so on the, on that side. So it's sort of not many places for it, but it's like where the, the best place for it. Okay, and Ed, anything? I think you pretty much covered it. Just that you might consider more blocks, but you can get it up stronger. You know, if there was water to go under it, you'll stabilize it better with something in addition of uh, just those four corners actually covering it. Okay, so uh, anyone in the audience have a comment? Anything further? I have nothing further to add. Okay, so what we have is called a negative conditional determination. And ha has this person gotten a copy of it yet? Just right before the meeting. All right, so we're gonna go through it. And if you have any questions, you can ask, but uh, uh, what appears to be the consensus of the commission is you can keep the shed, we'll remove some dirt in the middle, that's what it appears to be, what people are proposing, and uh, that, will be, that will be it. So we're gonna review the decision and then we'll vote. We'll see how it works out. Okay. Well, I want to know again. Go ahead. 샤드는 해도 되는데 그걸 조금 옮겨야 된대. 흙을. 그렇다면은 우리 철수한다. I mean, I don't. I was very the about one or in two inches of the gill. It was absolutely necessary for us to actually install the shed. Wasn't our own, you know, original plan to like, oh, let's raise it up and then put the shed. Uh, the the guy who had the guy who had helped us out building the shot, it was it was just very one of the things that was necessary. If you move the fields, I don't know if the shot is going to be able to like be stable stabilize. It, it, it needs to be stably. The shed is not being supported by the fill. It's only it's like still it's not holding the shed up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. 해도 된다니까. Uh, 왜냐 왜 그걸 했느냐면은. 물이 3인치, 5인치만 해도 물이 아, 역류돼 가지고 그 밑에 있는 흙으로 다 걸거든. 그래서 만약에 이걸 깎는다면은 물이 한 1인치, 2인치만 와도 침수돼 가지고 못 해. Okay. So you know it's in flood zone and when the storm comes or a flood happens which is is a frequent uh, even an inch or two inches without that uh, support, the shed is going to be either flooded away, washed away, and it's, gonna, it's not going to stay. Or and so a lot of times the garbage is also you know get transferred to us through the storms, and um, it was very necessary for us to keep that. And it's not even like yeah, I think five I inches. And what she's missing. I, I, like the filling is literally an inch or two inches. He's really insisting that the shot will stay or make it more stabilized than taking the fills away. All right, let's, let's, I heard what you said. Bill, would you like to respond? Yes, we're not asking you to lower the shed at all. Just, it's on the cinder blocks, and that's, that's good. That height is good. 
but any dirt that was brought in beside it has to be removed so water can flow under it if there is a flood. Those are the regulations. In other words, and if you needed an extra block or two, the commission may be amenable to you putting an additional block in the middle along the sides to help support it. But the, the dirt that is there is not touching the shed. It is not supporting the shed at all. Right. The shed is only being supported by the four cinder blocks. This is only the dirt that's brought in from the side that we're worried about. Not the dirt that's under the cinder block. The sense of the feeling, are you basically asking? Just enough so water can flow under the shed. So there's a clear space under the shed. First of all, I don't understand the water is not really flowing. In flow. It doesn't flow okay. at the time. Flood zone is designed to hold a certain amount of water. And if you put this shed in and prevent that amount of water, then there's less available for the flood storage. So we want to make sure that during a flood, there is water able to go under the shed. Mentioned that the regulations. Don't that's part of, six, that's still a, part of the regulations that, yeah. you know, you cannot put a structure that would prevent some of the flood zone from being filled with water but we'll do when there's a flood. Can, but um, yeah, exactly, we are the one who's been holding the flood water within our own property. Mm -hmm. Really, oftentimes doesn't make us to exercise our uh, exercise exercise our property rights, and I am he's a little up, he's kind of you know upset that uh, you guys are not even letting us keep that little amount of the field. I mean, which we will pop. The, pro the problem is, we have to comply with state and local regulations. We are not making this up just for you. We cannot allow the regulations state that you cannot impede the flow of the flood. In other words, that area is used to store water under the shed. It's part of the flood zone. And the regulations state that you can't prevent the flood from going where it always goes. That when it rains very heavy, that area fills up with water and you have to allow it to. Otherwise, we would have to ask you to remove the shed if you can't agree to this. I mean, yeah. you have to understand, we deal with a set of state regulations, and we actually have no choice. I understand. I did communicate it, and we'll see what we can. Okay. Choice. All right. Can I just add something? Yes, please. Um, houses and additions are built on, on tubes and on stilts. You, you don't really need the fill under there. You can have it just fill. Like, oh, this, this, this is this is the fill that they're talking about removing. You you built up the fill up like all, most of the way up the blocks, mm -hmm. and they just want you to remove that so that there's a free passage of water underneath. So you could still have the blocks and the, the whole shed. It's just saying, right. oops, okay. I did I did he has, uh, he has some other issues that he wanted to bring up to you guys. What are the, some of the ways to do so? Other than this issue, right? I'm not sure I understand the question. So only through the application, the specific application, you have to go through. I, he just <clears throat> uh, asked me to come to you. So what are the ways, the venues that we can communicate with you guys about anything? Because sometimes we don't. Oh, 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 in other words, for other, other action. Issues. For other issues. The first thing you should do when you're in a floodplain is walk into the office, the conservation office, and talk with our staff. They will walk you through the process. At any time, you can do that. Okay. Okay. You can email or, just call us or email or phone. 
오케이. 알겠다. 이메일 하래요. 어? 이메일 하래요. 지금 하래. 아니, 나중에 하래. 그럼 가는데. Okay, so we're going to go through the document and then we'll probably approve it and then you'll be all set. Got it. Thank you. So uh, just give us a couple of minutes. You don't have to leave. You can stay there if you want. Okay. All right. You mean here? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay, so I'll go through it. Apparently, our microphones aren't, that's why they can't hear us. The microphones just aren't working for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, so the applicant, uh, the. What's that? It was me. Oh, okay. Turning it on and off. No, that's not the microphone. The, this is the BCAT microphone. It, this, just... this is a WebEx mic. These are the BCAT ones that aren't working. You're probably right. Okay. So B, BCAT's probably just trying to pick us up through the uh, the mics in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the project the uh, project description: uh, small shed in the rear of the yard, approximately 50, 30 feet from the existing house. Jurisdictional areas, as we already discussed, bordering land subject to flooding, also known as floodplain, riverfront area, and the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands. Um, the findings the, um, the file, uh, uh, filing was retroactive as the shed was put in without a permit. Um, then findings regarding the flood, flood areas and uh, the the resource areas, the sheds approximately 170 feet from Long Meadow Brook in the outer riparian it was placed on cinder blocks. It is on an existing lawn area, so there wasn't any vegetation or anything um, removed to place it. Um, several inches of dirt was placed around the shed. The shed is probably less than five feet from the border in vegetated wetland, which was not delineated, but is the edge of lawn. Um, the commit, so this will require waivers. Uh, the commission would need to waive both the no build and no disturb setbacks because it's in within both. Um, so there's a finding if you do that there's no feasible location for a shed on the property that would that would meet the setback requirements. Um, and you would make a finding that the amount of floodplain fill created by the cinder blocks and the shed. So the shed is possibly in the floodplain as well, even on the cinder blocks because the flood elevation. Is, is roughly a foot and the cinder blocks aren't that high. Um, so part of the shed would also be in the floodplain, even on the cinder blocks. You're finding that the uh, fill is negligible and will not cause an increase or contribute incrementally to an increase in the horizontal extent or and level of floodwaters during peak flows. So that's, that's straight from the regulations. That's what you have to find. Otherwise you would need to issue a positive determination and require a notice of intent. Additionally, because the lot is flat with a high water table, floodplain compensation isn't feasible on this lot. There's just no place where you could do compensation. Um, so then the decision is a negative determination. Um, conditions for the work described above. Condition two is that the fill, as we discussed, be removed so the flow, uh, floodwaters can go under the shed. Then condition three is about tracking sediments when they're removing the fill. Um, then standard conditions about no other grading or filling and conditions about commission's right to access the site and non-compliance issues. Okay. See anything you have a questions about? You can always contact the office. Yes, uh, what to date. I have one last question. To what extent the fill around be moved? Like, a, like, is a couple of inches or like, I, there's no really uh, clear descriptions of how much of fill, like around. He's asking how, how much fill. Yeah, I understand. Okay, John, I assume it has to be enough so the water can freely flow under right. shed. Don't think that. The fill is serving any structural purpose as far as holding the shed up. I think it's it's put there maybe to keep the water from going under the shed. That seems like what it's there for. So it needs to be removed down to the level of the, the existing earth. Okay, so that's that's what it is. You can't you can't leave the fill there. If you need an extra cinder block to make sure that the shed stays up, I'm sure you could contact the office and that would be fine. But basically. The fill has to be removed and has to be up on blocks so the flood can just go under there as it was, according to the regulations. Okay, because, all right, 
It's not much. It's just enough that you can see straight through underneath the shed. All right. Water can have a place to go. All right. All right. So any further comment from the commission? All right, then could I have motion to issue a waiver of the no disturb uh, zone and the no build zone that is in our uh, wetlands bylaw uh, because this project is considered negligible and de minimis filling. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Five zero zero. Could I have a motion to issue a negative conditional determination under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 and the State Wetlands Protection Act uh, for for the uh, shed at located at 14 Sandy Brook Road? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Five zero zero. You're all set. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Okay. You want to do that? Okay. And you're free to go off, or you don't have to. the last time. Uh, okay. I probably yeah. did. Uh, continued public hearing, notice of intent, 1, 2, and 10 Wall Street for the Guterres Company Landscaping Activities DEP file number 122-1689. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Anadinsky on behalf of the Gutierrez Company. And for record, we have from all the abutters the oh, Here, oh, just one comment. Yes. Um, I did review a meeting. Yes. But I got that diagnosed identically to this. There's no sound on that June 8th video. Uh, there is. I, mean, I Did you get it okay? I got it okay, yeah. Okay. I had to so turn it up. This happening there. I had to turn it up. I turned. Again. I can just hear voices. But yeah, no, I had to turn it up quite high to hear it. Oops. Okay, so, uh, John or Eileen, was there anything further that you can recollect uh, needed for this application? It was continued because they didn't have a file number. All right. I think I think you were you were pretty happy with right with the proposals in general. You had asked specifically for an extra tree because you were concerned about um, uh, shade reduced shading on on the stream, and they did add that in. It oh, I'll just show. Is this the one? Just that, one that circle is red. right. Yeah. Let me just share it just just so they can be reminded, and then I think we're good to go. Okay, just just to remind you, this uh, tree that's circled in red is actually the right. additional one. Um, I think everybody on the whole was pretty happy with their proposals. It was mostly uh, landscaping, and some of the work is outside the riverfront. Right, right. Okay, so uh, do you have anything further to add at this point? No. Nope. All right, so we have a draft. We'll review it and then vote. Okay. Uh, Eileen, or John, would you you? Um, okay, I'll read it out, that's fine. Okay, um, let's start with the bylaw. Uh, project consists of the removal of non-native and non-thriving vegetation and planting of native trees and shrubs within the front area of Little Brook. The project also involved expansion of seating areas, replacing, sorry, I'm just moving the things, impervious surfaces with pervious pavers at the building entrance, more pervious, permeable pavers and plantings to be installed, along with 20 electric vehicle charging stations at the eastern building entrance outside the riverfront area. Um, then we go through the filing history and um, a lot of document references. Uh, under wetland values and areas subject to protection, we have described that the project in, in involves work that will occur within the 200 foot riverfront area to Little Brook or Little Brook. Then the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands, the closest trees to be replaced are very close to the stream bank. Work in those areas can generate adverse impacts to those areas. The wetland wasn't delineated for this application, therefore, the Commission is not officially approving the delineation. Impervious services would be reduced by about 454 
square feet and the drainage conditions would not be altered. Um, for the most part, um, stormwater management regulations were really not applicable since this is largely um, a redevelopment project and uh, mostly to do with landscaping. Uh, a waiver will be required for work within the no disturb setback. Since the disturbance is temporary, the Commission, we're proposing that the Commission grants this waiver. And then we are proposing a bond of $4,000. Um, $4, and then switching over to the order, uh, it's going to list all the same class references. And I think you've, you've looked at these, so I can yes. just skip down through them. Most of them are very uh, our boilerplate, the, the first several are just uh, typical. Uh, again, we're saying if the order permits work within the 100 foot buffer zone to BBW and within the riverfront to the brook and no other work, um, they will let us know when they're ready to do work on the site and will um, demonstrate that they have um, recorded the order and paid their bond um, and put up any erosion controls which are shown on the reference plan and that we will also those. then materials should not be stockpiled on the site within 40 feet of the wetlands or brook and keep generally just keep the site clean and don't let anything go into the brook under work involving filling and grading there there isn't really anything that's proposed so no additional grading should happen pollution control measures are all standard um keep, again keep the area clean anything falls into the stream clean it out um Pesticides, herbicides, fungicides shall not be used within 100 feet of wetlands. It's a, uh, a perpetual condition. No rock salt shall be used on paved surfaces. That's also a perpetual condition. The landscaping operations and maintenance plan shall be recorded at the Middlesex Registry of Deeds prior to uh, the certificate of occupancy. A total of 23 native deciduous trees shall be planted across the property. And they should monitor for two full growing seasons and anything that is failing to uh, survive or thrive will, uh, will be replaced. Um, no native species plants, no invasive plant species should be planted anywhere within Burlington and that's also a perpetual condition. And then we have just standard uh, description of how to go about getting your certificate of occupancy and certificate of compliance. Okay, so do you have any questions on what you've heard at all? No questions. It's Fairly standard stuff, actually. So I just want to point out on condition 48, the, the landscaping O and M plan um, specifies that you will not require additional filings from the applicant for activities approved in that plan that recorded. So if if the O and M plan says you know they're going to prune or whatever, you're you're basically saying you're not going to require them to file as long as they're following that O and M plan. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, anyone on the commission would like to comment further? No. Okay, I guess this is a hearing, right? So anyone in the audience want to comment on 1210 Wall Street? I don't, is there anyone online who would like to comment? There's nobody online. Nobody online, says John, okay. Uh, therefore, we can, could I therefore have a motion to close the hearing on DEP file number 122-689? Second. Yep. All in favor? Five zero zero. Could I have a motion to uh, uh, waive the 20-foot the no disturb setback that's in our bylaw, that's required in our bylaw since the disturbance is temporary for this project? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Five zero zero. Same vote. Could I have a motion to adopt the findings under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 for our DEP file number 122-689? So moved. Second. Same. All in favor? Same vote. Could I have a motion to adopt uh, the permit conditions, order of conditions under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 in the State Wellness Protection Act for uh, DEP file 122-689. Second. Second. All in favor? Same vote. And finally, could I have a motion to require the posting of a performance guarantee 
uh, in the amount of $4,000 under authority of Burlington Bylaw Article 14 for DEV file 122-689. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion at all? How did you come up with 4,000? I come up with, sorry, I forgot. How did you come up with um, 4,000? Yes. Yes. Like a nice number? Is it a similar project we have come up with 4,000? Um, no, we probably haven't had that many landscaping in the river, in the riparian projects before, but. Just curious, you know, 4,000 is. In other words, like this. I mean, the sensitivity of the, the area and justify a reasonable amount, I'm sure. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, the good news is, although it's really close to the brook, I mean, there's going to be high visibility plantings, so you know they're going to replace them if they don't survive anyway, so. Right, thank you. Very good point. All right, so uh, do we, the motion's on the floor. Do we, all in favor? Five zero zero. You're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Thank you very much. Look forward to see how nice it looks after it's done. Yeah, thank you. Thank All you. right, thank you. Um, All right. Next, we have a continued public hearing, which is the proposed changes to the Burlington Wetlands Bylaw, Article 14, Section 1, oh. to, incorpor to incorporate uh, the interests of climate resiliency. But maybe that one's already all set. Okay. Um, tied up in something. Yeah. Oh, who's supposed to do with that? I don't think anything. It's, he was still telling me about it separately. It's kind of but thank you. Okay. Okay. I already announced the next hearing for the. Uh, okay. Sorry. And I, I said it was for the. You maybe not heard it. It's for the purposes of putting in the interests of climate resiliency uh, with. Uh, either Bill or John or Eileen like to give us a give a summary since we do have someone in the audience who are. Yes, Bill. Yes. <laughs> um, th this is really uh, more general and non-specific. We're changing our uh, bylaw to include climate resiliency as a criteria on which we can take protective action. Um, the specifics of how that will be done would come up with regulations in the future. So, but we just want to make sure that in addition to the uh, aspects that are currently protected and defined in the, uh, in the bylaw, uh, you know, such as the groundwater supply and wildlife habitat and things like that, we're now going to be able to include in our decision making carbon and greenhouse gas storage and sequestration, uh, prevention and reduction of heat islands, things that in the past were not normally part of our our debate or not certainly included in the in the uh, in the bylaw. So it's just adding those things as things we can consider uh, the specifics of how we would expect people to do that will be in the future with bylaws. Uh, but this to get the I'm going to keep with regulations. Yeah. All right. So, so we, we we will be holding hearings on any proposed changes uh, to the bylaws, and you know they will be held open for quite a while right. uh, before we make changes. And uh, maybe we can give um, some examples. We went over that last time. We talked about a few examples of what it may be, but it, I mean, but the whole idea is is that it's in the interest of our environment. To hold carbon and not have it released into the atmosphere. Okay. And uh, so it could be as something as someone's proposing to cut down trees. We may have regulations that suggest to the maximum extent feasible, you leave the actual wood there because that's a form of storing carbon instead of having it decompose and then released into the atmosphere. Uh, protecting wetlands, for example, wetlands are low oxygen environments. And where we can perhaps create wetlands or replace wetlands, uh, one of the purposes of doing that is that it absorbs, it holds and absorbs carbon into the soil, for example. Okay, so uh, anything we can do to uh, promote the retention of carbon, which is ca called carbon storage and sequestration, that's what it means. And a lot of it actually has to do with trees and so forth. 
Uh, we did a little bit of that, uh, uh, and uh, regarding what private property owners can do with trees. And admittedly, it's a sensitive topic because people want to be able to use their land and so forth. Uh, when we considered the stormwater, here's an example. When we considered the stormwater bylaw, for example, uh, we talked about uh, if there's anything we can require when people remove trees from the sidelines or, not, or perhaps not ask them to remove trees from the sidelines. But the problem is it interferes with, it got into a discussion of interfering with construction along the sidelines of a lot, for example. And that became problematic, so we didn't do anything with the stormwater bylaw on that at this time. Uh, however, uh, we did come up with that uh, without good reason, we now have in our stormwater bylaw, and it was passed by town meeting, that the last 15 feet of a lot, unless there's a very good reason, we asked the applicant, the property owner, or whoever's proposing the project, to not remove trees within the 15 foot rear setback, for example. And there seemed to be a consensus that that would not interfere with the majority of any construction. Now we may have a situation where, and we do this regularly, where if we pass a regulation that on occasion, for good reason, can't be complied with, we, the applicant requests a waiver. And when they request a waiver, uh, if there's no other alternative, the commission has a history of granting a waiver. Similar to like what you heard today, we have the 20 foot no disturb zone at the edge of a wetland. We would like to leave it natural. Sometimes we have to waive it because there is simply no alternative. Uh, would anybody else like to talk about the kinds of things that might be considered in regulations at all? I mean, we have, I mean, what, what you have that list on the, uh, do you have that list of uh, stuff on the, I don't have it in front of me, I forgot yeah. to bring it. The interest that we added say what? They say. It's on the screen as well. Yeah, it says carbon, greenhouse gas storage, and sequestration. We gave some examples of that. Uh, uh, the protection of biodiversity is one of the things that we're listing as a general interest, in addition to all the other interests that wetlands serve. And an example of that is that we're going to be having excessive, more extreme temperatures, excessive heat. People seem to acknowledge that that's what's happening to our client. We're going to have uh, greater amounts of rain. Our 24 hour uh, rainfall that infrastructure is designed to used to be seven inches in a 24 hour period. The data now shows and our, law, and our bylaw calls for it that uh, the 24 hour 100 year rainfall is now 8.9 I believe, is that correct? Point something. 8.8, 8.9 inches. And in the coming 20 years, it's expected to go up to the tw the 100 year storm is in a 24 hour period could go as high as 11 or 11 and a half inches. So in the protection of biodiversity, when we have projects that are replacement and stuff that are important to absorbing CO2 and things like that, if you want them to survive in that kind of an environment, in a high heat environment and lots of rain, then um, you have to specify the proper mix of plants that can survive that type of environment. And so one of the interests that I just cited was the protection of biodiversity in a climate that is changing, for example. Um, mitigation of the impacts from climate change, that's a very uh, similar thing. Uh, prevention and reduction of heat islands. Um, we are all uh, well aware that um, asphalt, black asphalt, and black roofs and pavement hold heat. And it creates, a, in, in areas 
like the mall on a very hot day, it actually becomes a very unpleasant environment. So when um, something like an office park or a commercial building with lots of asphalt comes in for, say, a renovation, in my own mind, the regulations may require uh, that we convert, if possible, some of the asphalt to green space to help eliminate that. Or we encourage the planting of additional trees to eliminate the heat island effect that is very unpleasant on a hot day, for example. So nothing is cast in stone, but the bylaw changes are just a very, very few, general in nature, and what? You took it down. Oh, she took it down. Oh, I, I had put up the the so the rainfall. Number. The rainfall. Oh, I don't care about the rainfall numbers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the here you go. It's back. The, the the major changes are a few sentences in the upfront portion of the bylaw, and it's it, changes to. The resource area interests that are resource currently. area interests, yes. Yeah. And so, in addition to what the State Wetlands Protection Act says and what our current bylaw says, which is included but not limited to that the purpose of protecting the wetlands and the floodplain is for public and private water supply, groundwater supply, flood control, erosion and sedimentation control, stormwater damage prevention and control of pollution. These are all things that wetlands do. And the preservation of wildlife habitat and rare species habitat. We're now adding some interest because the climate is changing onto that list. We're adding specifically carbon and greenhouse gas storage and sequestration, which means holding the carbon inside living things so it doesn't, it's not released. Prevention and reduction of heat islands protection of biodiversity for the changing climate as we specify things. And the last interest we have listed here is mitigation of impact from climate change, which is kind of a catch all. And so anything that we consider would be the subject of, of changes to our regulations under this authority but we don't have anything firmly in mind at the moment. We know that <clears throat> many cities and towns in the Commonwealth are making these general changes and are looking at their regulations under the bylaw as to what makes sense for their town. Uh, and it's fair to say that um, our town is different than, say, Harvard or Bolton or Groton and things like that. The lots are smaller, and the commission certainly recognizes that. And so what, what is right for changes in the regulation for Burlington would not be acceptable. I mean, it's, it, you know, what other towns are doing would not be acceptable here. Okay, so uh, we... As we make proposed changes now, one of the things that uh, I have in mind um, that um, some towns have done is they have enacted a bylaw that authorizes a municipal municipal property, a tree planting program along the streets, and what. Some towns have done, I'm not even sure how successful it is, I think it's successful, is that private property owners that are required to replace trees when they take trees down, uh, on a, replace the trees on a one-to-one -one basis, say, which we even have now if, it's near, if you're under our jurisdiction. That, that's what our thing is now. But if you couldn't do it, the option would be to have an applicant pay on a per tree basis, whatever it costs to plant the tree as part of the municipal tree planting program, there'd be a fund established. I'm not sure of the details, it would, would all have to be worked out, 
but that's just me personally. We haven't discussed that, and we haven't proposed anything. That would but, be in the bylaws, though. This is not. That's not part of this. But would the, be in the regulations. I'm sorry. That would be, be a regulation. That would be in. It may be a separate bylaw for that for a separate municipal. We could have a tree bylaw. We yeah. could have a tree yeah. bylaw that starts with a municipal tree planting program, for example, and and uh, uh, but that's kind of like a related thing to promote the planting of trees. Uh, so that's all we're doing at this time. Uh, uh, Phyllis Etzel, you've you've sat patiently listening to all this. Uh, do you have any questions at all? Uh, I do. Um, Why don't you come up and talk? Talk. I, you know, if if you have any questions at all, we're glad you're here. Actually, the first time I've actually listened to you talk about this, and um, well, one thing I was thinking of is that. Um, doesn't work so oh okay would you need to um are some of these might be considered um um zoning changes also for instance you were talking about heat islands uh in a, in a mall and i'm thinking that uh, zoning changes that would permit parking garages would then enable more green space because yes. you would not need these big parking lots. Well, um, so I'm wondering if you were going to be talking with the planning department about. Well, and that effort is somewhat underway. The mall corridor has a study ongoing now through the economic, you're probably aware of it, yeah. the economic development director. Right. And, you know, I personally, maybe others went. Uh, and I went to those workshops or whatever they called it. Yeah. And people were talking about changes to bylaws that allows the use of asphalt parking lot that's not being used. At the same time, a lot of people talked about that walking paths, shaded walking paths for either the residents or the people that work in the adjacent areas uh, is going to become more essential. Otherwise, it's not going to be very pleasant in the in the very hot sun with going from 20 days over 90 degrees to we might go to 30 or 40 days over 90 degrees. And so having, you know, shaded longitudinal walkways between buildings and things like that. And I have a feeling that would be the subject of zoning changes. Yeah. Okay. And if they come up with something like that, for that study area along Mall Road, uh, some of it may apply to other areas as well. Right. Would anybody on the commission like to comment on this subject? Well, I think the first step of that Mall Road initiative is to generate zoning changes. That's the first thing they're going to propose to town meeting. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're going to try and do it September or January now, but that will be the first thing that they're trying to do is come up with change in the zoning and it's not going to apply only to the mall road. It's going to apply for the town as a whole. Um, just to, before I forget, there's a couple of other minor changes we're talking about for uh, the stormwater uh, bylaw, and that is, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, wetland bylaw, and that is we're changing wording. Like every place it says, uh, uh, board of selectmen will now be changed to members of the select board. You know, things like that that need to be tuned to the modern lingo or any uh, erroneous little uh, grammatical things. You know, so there'll be some minor changes as well. Uh, but the, the, the major ones are what uh, the chair has already pointed out here. And again, specifics are going to have to be a part of it. I, I think the uh, changes to the bylaw do have to be discussed too, with the, uh, the zoning bylaw people, right? The zoning uh, committees, but they'll have to go through them as well. There's a, there's a I think there's a town meeting. No, does not. So the bylaw? Would it have to go through them before it goes to town? Go to the general bylaw review. There's a general bylaw review. And this is okay, this the general bylaw. The zoning changes they have. Right. They have right. Okay, yes, yeah. Uh, when, you, when you talk about trees, I get nervous. 
<laughs> uh, a lot of person, a lot of residents are uh, agreeing. Oh. Don't want you know they're my trees and I can do what I want with them. But as a community in, at large, trees are vital. I know that I um, I like most people here. I have a half acre lot, and I would say maybe um, all, close to a third of it is left natural, wild. I mean, and I mean wild. Right now, I can't walk through it. And and there are trees in there, and so I personally like trees, and don't like to see trees taken down. And there there are some trees in there that need to be taken down. Sure. And I put it off another year. A couple of them may fall, <laughs> and then I'll have to deal with them. But I don't have any wetlands. I don't have any buffer on my property. So right now I'm free to do what I want. And I kind of like that. So as I said, I get nervous um, when you talk about trees because I've seen some of the other bylaws in some of the other towns and it, it they can be almost too stringent. Um, so I don't know, Sometimes, I have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, some town, well, we're not proposing anything specific right no. now, but right. some trees, some some towns, have experienced that tried to put in bylaws and they got substantial pushback. Yeah. I mean, I'm aware of it. And the other thing I'll point out to you, Phyllis, is that the Conservation Commission will not be acting unilaterally and just do things, you know, against the objections of 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 our stakeholder community. We we don't work that way. Right. So I mean you, you I've known you a long time, and I, I, I assume you and Bob would agree to that, that we don't, yes. we don't do that. So, so uh, uh, well, let me just ask, is there anyone else who would like to talk or comment on it? It is a public hearing, and, and you and, uh, you know, uh, and anyone else is perfectly welcome to submit comments. It's going to be open for a few more meetings, probably, or when does it have to be? Uh, well, that's something we should talk about once you're done with the. Yeah, what, which which town meeting it's going to go to? Okay, but we, you know, what the idea is to get input from. I'm glad you came and gave us input, and in, anybody else. But you will be writing regulations. Yeah, we would be writing regulations, and I think I would accept your comment that putting in restrictions on what people can do with trees on their property happens to be a sensitive issue. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. I'm, I, I think we are very much aware of it. Okay, and, and honestly, any restrictions we have put in that, say, most people comply with, but some people have trouble complying with, we have generally granted waivers mm -hmm. and there's no other alternative. Well, one thing I, I right now, <clears throat> Under, if you put put this in, it would only you would only be able to control someone who came before you because not when working in that's correct. That's correct. Now, do I think a municipal tree planting program that we have many of those programs they actually pay for homeowners to to say yes, would you like some trees planted in your front yard, so many feet from the from the street? And a lot of people, it tends to be very popular with some people, yeah, because uh, they they would like to see trees planted at no expense. Yes. So I mean, maybe we'll maybe we can start with something like that too. So, uh, at this point, so I, so I think we've gotten kind of far afield from the changes that we're proposing to the town, town yep. meeting, which is some fairly innocuous lines of um, increasing the purposes of the wetland bylaw. Right. Um, the devil will be in the details on the regulations, but I'll point out we, you, one, of the, one of the purposes that you currently have is recreation and educational values. We have no performance standards in our regulations whatsoever for educational and rec recreational. I don't know. I'm not really sure how we would do that, and we would have equally difficult time actually enacting some regulations for some of these other things that we're putting in as values of, of and interests of the wetland bylaw. So it, it'll be it'll be a, a difficult process crafting regulations, and it'll be time consuming, 
and it'll be all in public hearings. It'll be public as well. Yeah, that's important. Right. And although we had a lot of discussion on the stormwater bylaw mm. about regulating trees, we the way we finally ended up, I mean, we talked about being more aggressive with it, the way we finally ended up realizing that there would be substantial, there was substantial pushback, is that it would be the subject of a separate tree bylaw and not try to get it into uh, the stormwater bylaw. Okay, And the only thing we have in there right now is for full permits, is that correct? Right, yeah. For only for full stormwater permits, which is a large property, a restriction, unless there is a cause, to refrain from cutting trees in the back 15 foot setback. That, that's, I mean, nothing. That, you're right. That's, that's why there wasn't an objection. It's not much. It's not much. Right, right. So, uh, uh, so the question is which hearing, which uh, a town meeting will we be going? Right. So there's a, a deadline coming up uh, very soon, right? When is the January town meeting? Do we know? Um, well, we can look it up. Hold on. We have a deadline coming up soon for the September. Right. So we have the deadline for the September meeting is coming up. So we could we could put it in for that and keep talking. Right. Um, you know, at our next meeting, because it wouldn't have to go to print. But there'll be one more one more meeting of public hearing. Yeah, at least one. Put it in in September, basically. But, but we could put it in as placeholder right now, I guess. Right. But, I think that would be a reasonable goal. I mean, there's not a lot of public uh, comment. It's not, as Larry said, there's not a lot of details. It's just the generic, uh, general statements about we should be more attentive to these interests. Until, until you actually write the regulations, there's probably no controversy. I mean, this is fine. Right. right. I, I, okay. Right. Good. Right. I'm glad you feel that way because uh, we do too. I do. Yeah, we, we, we don't think this is particularly controversial. No. It's just an admission that our wetlands bylaw has issues with respect to climate change that we may have to deal with in some fashion. It'll, it'll be the regulations that will cause the right, right. controversy. And we will, uh, we will be posting it widely that we're having the hearings and it would probably go on for a while. Okay. And it, we, we, we take the input we get seriously, to be honest with you, very seriously. I know you do. Uh, so the, the meeting for town, the town meeting in January, there's five Mondays. Okay. I'm guessing it's probably the 22nd. Okay, then. I'm pretty sure. That which would be. I would suggest we go in January. Really? Why, why do you think we shouldn't go we need, September? Well, as you just said yourself, these the day are is, changes. The day is in September. The fourth Monday again. Got it here. September. Don't forget. There was only a couple of lines. Oh, that's a, that's a religious holiday. That's Yom Kippur. So then they will make an artist. That Monday is Yom Kippur. Yeah, so, so then it might be the Wednesday, the fall. It might Wednesday. be the Wednesday, yeah. the 27th. Of the actual town meeting. Is September. So, 8th, 29th. That's fine. I mean. I think it's the 29th. 20 something. Yeah. I think it's the 29th. Is, is, wasn't it going to be quite late? 27th. Okay, 27th. Isn't it? You were around from 27th. Oh. Where did you see that? I just that would be the like fifth it. Monday. That doesn't make sense to me. No. It's on well, the fifth well, maybe, Monday. Maybe you're wrong. But we are 45 days from town meeting is the deadline. I wouldn't have a problem with that. General bylaw. And you say things. Because I think we're very conversant. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what does that mean? Um, 45 days before town meeting. So, so I mean. July, one of the th one of the things we ran into with the stormwater bylaw is the, the process where the bylaw review committee was lengthy. I mean, these are minor changes, but I don't know if they're going to want to go through the bylaw and change um, anything in our existing bylaw as far as phrase. So, what, well, we should file for it, and if it looks like they need more time, then if we have to postpone, we postpone. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. So.
So do we go, so we go, can we leave it open for now? Yes. Yes. Continue to the next okay. meeting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, could I have a motion to leave the hearing on the changes to the wetlands bylaw open until the next meeting of July thirteenth? July thirteenth. Should we start the process? Moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Yeah, but based on these. So. Um, These are the only changes we're proposing. It's pretty minimal for this. Uh, but if you have any more, if you do have any more questions or concerns, don't hesitate to get them into the record too. I will. Um, I'm going to read up on it a little more myself. Sure. Um, it's on the website. It's on the commission's web page under open hearings. Right? Oh, okay. This, this version. Yeah. Yeah. And there were a lot of articles. Um, oh, I kind of googled it and read some articles about resiliency and. There's a lot online. Yep. We, Interesting. Also, when we get to regulations, our previous experience with changing regulations, we do take suggestions from the order too yeah. on what changes to make, how to, how to do it. Yeah. So uh, it's important. Right. So Just once once they voted, they're there. That's right. <laughs> we all have. I mean, I mean if it's not work if it's not workable for many people, then maybe we didn't get it right. So we don't want that to happen. So, well, uh, so thank you very much for staying. Well, I appreciate it. And um, I'm sure this will not be a problem. Yeah. Just for these few changes you're making now, like I said, I think it will be with the regulations. Sure. Let's start. Sure. Have to start someplace. Start but, somewhere. But I'll, right. I'll just reiterate, we actually have no firm specific regulations in mind at this point. We really have, we really are not there yet. So, uh, well, I'm sure you'll have them. And as I said, mine, my favorite will be the trees. Um, I, you and many, you and many other people. As much, I, as much as I don't like to see trees cut down, I do understand um, how people feel, especially how builders have to deal with uh, right, right, uh, vegetation and trees on on properties. So. Um, you know, I can see, I see it both ways. As, as you are probably are aware, there are many homeowners and builders in town who do request to take down trees. Yes. And many of those trees, not always, but many of the, there is a basis for it. The trees are either split at the trunk or they're rotted or there's, you know, they're half dead. I mean, there's a lot of times there actually is a basis for it. Yeah. But it does take a long time for a tree to grow also. So, you know, yes. once they're down. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you put it like that, that a mature oak tree takes up 100 gallons of water per day. Yeah. And if you're trying to mitigate flooding from water and stuff like that. It is wonderful. Yeah, I mean, so. So, like I said, I can see it both ways. Yeah, thanks so much for staying for the hearing. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Uh, next, we have planning board comments. Nothing really. Uh, subcommittee staff reports. Anything? No. Uh, other business enforcement order fifty eight Beaverbrook. Is there anybody online for that at all? No. No. Okay. Well, so I forwarded you a letter uh, from. Um, the applicant. So, yes. so there's there was an enforcement order. There was also a um, a notice of intent for that property for a house, and they're actually looking maybe to come in for a certificate of compliance. But as part of the enforcement order, there was a requirement that they plant six native trees, um, and I forwarded you the request from him where he's asking to um, to allow him to plant three this year. And three next year due to financial reasons. Okay. Uh, anybody have a comment? Would like to discuss it? No, I think that's fine. As long as he go follows through with it. Uh, do you take exception to that request at all? No. Do you? No. To, 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 no. No, to plant a tree like we've asked, 
Do you know how much? I really don't know. I haven't seen what kind of trees he got. I mean, he may have spent a couple hundred dollars a tree. I'm not right. really sure. Right. A typical tree of a decent size is two, three hundred dollars. Then if you're going to pay somebody to plant it for you, another two or three hundred bucks, you know? Yeah. Right. So. Well, I know, I know if you buy it at, not that they should go there, but Mahoney's, whatever the cost of the tree, that's how much they charge you to plant it. Okay. If you buy a Japanese maple for fifteen hundred, they will charge. Last time I checked, they will charge you fifteen hundred to plant it. It doesn't matter if it's the same size as any other tree. You spend fifteen hundred on the tree. That's how much double it to plant it. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there's no, is that your only request? Yes. Okay, could I have a motion to agree that three train for 58 Beaver Brook Road under the enforcement order, the commission agrees that three trees would be planted this year and three trees would be planted next year as per the owner's request? So moved. Second. All in favor? 500. That's unanimous. <clears throat> okay, next meeting is July 13th. I got one other uh, August other business 10th. item. Yeah. Um, we had recently, as part of a uh, site visit, we had done a tour of the district to look at uh, what they were planning to do for building and planting. Um, and at the time, I had briefly mentioned to Chris Jones, who was the lead uh, landscape architect, if he would do a similar one for the Burlington Garden Club. And uh, so I reached out to him now, and I'm arranging another walk through the district for I'm um, being the intermediary between him and the Burlington Garden Club. Uh, and we're going to look at a day in an evening in July. And he's all in favor of it. And he reached out to national development and they're all in favor of it. So for the purpose of the same similar purpose that the original walk was done? Well not so much to address the construction, but to address the landscaping philosophy, the function of the rain gardens. You know what they're trying to do there from a garden perspective, rather the use pathways, maybe. Yeah, whatever he wants to do as his presentation. Yeah, I see. I see. But the garden club is was interested in it, so I arranged it for him. Okay. Uh, is there any? I have one more thing. Uh, the next meeting is listed as August tenth. We could do August twenty fourth instead as the one meeting. Uh, is there any interest in doing August 24th? Or does anybody have, I have a conflict, but I will forego the conflict and come probably come here instead. But the 24th would be easier. Okay. But you're not. Is there any other conflict for this room would be the question. Well, that's the, that's the reference that starts on the 25th. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can, I'm available either one. I'm available either of those dates. I'm just curious whether this room would be available. If any, if anyone objects and it's inconvenient, then might not. John, John's going to be on vacation. Be on vacation. Okay. Okay. Um, let me check the room first before sure. before we formally sure. decide. Sure. Okay. Of course. And we can announce it at the next meeting in July. When that date will actually be. If it if it has to remain for anybody's good reason, I have no issue with it. Then that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? It's ten of eight. We probably could go for another hour if you have anybody would like. You'd be alone if you did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> Okay, could I have a motion to adjourn this meeting, please? Second. Second. All in favor? Vote is 500. Thank you all and good evening.